Looks like we stopped dropping frames. Hello everybody, this is Clayton, and um, this is the Friday show. Going to try to be a little bit quicker today. Um, last show was good, and we went a little bit over time, but today we um, really don't have that much to talk about. Just going to go through the injury report, um, and then point out some matchups that I like, and if there are any questions in the chat, we'll address them, but... Other than that, we're just going to, you know, have a quick Friday show. Um, but, you know, uh, right now the stream is doing okay, but I uh, had some drop frames early. That might be on Twitch's end, but it seems to be good now. But I'll let you know. We might have to restart at some point. Uh, but anyway, going through the um, injuries um, list so far, Leonard Hankerson's out. Um... Really not that big of a deal. Uh, doesn't really provide much in terms of, you know, fantasy value for Roddy White or anything. Um, but Steve Smith is going to play. Isaiah Crowell is going to play. Duke Johnson is going to play. All out there if you need them. Um, Des Bryant's questionable. Um, I think Dallas will still be, lim uh, still be you know, cautious with him. Uh, it doesn't make sense to rush him back. Um, especially if Tony Romo's not there uh, to support him as quarterback. Um, Joseph Randall's out. Now that's kind of a big one because um, uh, with Randall out, you're looking at uh, a last week you had a really good game from Darren McFadden. So um, potentially Darren McFadden heads a backfield. Again, it's against Seattle, however, so it's not, you know, going to be a huge fantasy matchup for you. But um, just Joseph Randall being out, um, you know, is something to look at. Mayo you know, Sanders is playing, Matthew Stafford is playing, Calvin Johnson is playing. Uh, James Marks comes into this week as questionable, which is kind of interesting. Uh, he missed practice Wednesday, played Thursday and Friday. Um, Starks, the the interesting thing about his injury designation is he had a really good game before the bye, um, playing kind of instead of Eddie Lacy, who wasn't really on the injury report, but we just kind of got from coaching staff is nicked up. Um, so to see James Starks on the injury report without Eddie Lacy is kind of interesting. Um, might be worth watching. Eddie Lacy and the, the the Green Bay Packers don't have a good match if they're playing Denver. Um, Denver's been one of the better defenses this season. So it's going to be somebody to monitor, but um, I think you're probably not starting Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy's kind of like a, a backup pick um, to see if he takes the job away from... Uh, I'm not sorry. James Starks is a backup pick. See if he takes the job away from Eddie Lacy at some point further down the road. Um, Devontae Adams uh, is probably starting, probably coming back. Um, but he's kind of mired in the Green Bay wide receiver, you know, mess. So we don't know, other than, you know, other than James Jones, really, and maybe Randall Cobb. It's hard to say who's going to get, you know, points out of the Green Bay wide receiving core week after week. It reminds me of the Saints, you know, a couple of years ago where Marcus Colston would go off a week and then you would have Kenny Stills or um, you know, just uh, Lance Moore going off a different week and it just was hard to gauge because Drew Brees was spreading the ball out so effectively. The only real um, commodity that you had to own was Jimmy Graham in that offense, but other than that, um, it was Drew Brees is going to, you know, get his fantasy points to who we don't really know, but, um, 
Yeah, I feel like that is kind of how Aaron Rodgers plays. He's a great quarterback, a great fantasy asset, but he doesn't exactly raise the level of other fantasy assets around him. Uh, Jeremy Macklin is going to play. Alex Smith's going to play. Kelsey's going to play. Uh, Chikandrick West is going to play. Adrian Peterson is going to play. Oh, these are all minor nicks and cuts. Uh, Eric Decker being questionable. Um, he's probably going to play according to reports. That's probably just a you know a generous ding designation. John Brown is probably on the other end. John Brown is probably fifty fifty in terms of questionable, but is probably leaning on not playing, even though he's been questionable the last two weeks. I would say he doesn't play um, because they're heading into a bye after this, and they want him healthy for the the final stretch. Um, uh, ben Roethlisberger will start this weekend. It's not a great weekend for him to start. Um, in my opinion, um, I just don't like quarterbacks coming off of long injuries first game just because they have to catch up to reading defenses, catch up to reading um, how secondaries react, and that game speed. You're, you, you, you've got, you know, getting ready in practice, and Ben Roethlisberger's a pro. He's been at this for a long time, so it's not as damaging, but the Bengals are a fast defense. They're an attacking defense. Um Marvin Lewis is going to, you know, put a lot of pressure on Ben right at the gate. So I think if you're starting him, it's it's not a it's not a week I would expect a 300 yard game from. Um, mainly because that's not what they're going to need against the Bengals. They're going to need you know a controlled game, a good rushing game, um, a good game from Le'Veon Bell if they want to win this week. And I I think that they're going to work Ben back into his. He was destroying people. He was he was, he was throwing for a 350 plus earlier in the season before he went out. So, um, and that was those weren't against chump teams either. That was against the Patriots, who you know defense has been exploited. But Ben Roethlisberger has that ability. Like, let me go just go to the stats real quick. Look, we had a 351 yard game and a 369 yard game, and then the 192 he's get he got injured early in that game. So. Um, Ben Roethlisberger, you know, has the potential this season, especially if you look at his end-of-season schedule. Um, he's coming back to the game against Cincy, but then he has a game against Oakland and Cleveland before the bye. Those two games are ah, big starts for him. I think he'll do very well in those two. He's got a Seattle game, which I would be cautious about. But then Indianapolis, big game numbers-wise. Cincinnati and Denver, eh. And then Baltimore in what could be your fantasy championship game. A defense that has surrendered all the fantasy points to quarterbacks. So you're talking about a quarterback who's you know has maybe I would say two bad matchups: Denver and Seattle being bad matchups. I don't think since he's a bad matchup, I just don't like him just coming off the injury. But two bad matchups and the rest of the t- the rest of the games he's got great matchups for him. And even his bad matchup, one of his bad matchups is at home. So that. Denver coming east for a 4 o'clock game. It would have been better if it was 1 o'clock, to be honest. But um, for a 4 o'clock game, is, you know, it's not as damning as it could be. But, wow, look at that Baltimore game for your fantasy championship week. Or, or a third place game. And either way, is that's a great, that's a great matchup. It's a really great matchup, especially because the Ravens might not have anything to play for at that point. So they might be trying out new things, trying out young defenders. And Pittsburgh is probably going to be in the thick of a wild card race. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I would, it's a night game. It's prime time game. Th- that game, the, Indian, the Indianapolis game, Cleveland, Oakland, all I think are great great games, big point games for Ben Roethlisberger. So I, w- I would watch uh, I would watch the game this weekend being, you know, very optimistic and seeing how he plays, seeing how quickly he jumps back. Um, so, you know, good, good value there. Um, Heath Miller is going to play. Antonio Gates is questionable. Uh, he's, he's, again, been out of practice all this week. Probably won't play, giving Ladarius Green, again, fantasy value. In what should be kind of a shootout game uh, this weekend, because you have them going against um, Baltimore. 
And that Baltimore, like we were just talking about, is not a defense who's been doing well this season. So, again, big-time game, prime-time game. Um, and I think that Heath Mill, uh, Antonio Gates' replacement, Ladarius Green, gives you a lot of viability there. Um, just finishing off this short list of we had a lot less injuries last week, which was you know good from a fantasy perspective and from a real life perspective because you hate to see players injured. Uh, you have Vincent Jackson who's not going to play. Um, he's already pretty much out. Marshawn Lynch who's going to play. Carlos Hyde who's already been ruled out, and Anquan Bolden who's you know probably out. Um, hamstring was tweaked at the Thursday practice. Anytime you tweak a string leading up into the week of the game, you're not going to play. Uh, so, uh, so if, if you have basically if you're if you're relying on 49ers players anyway, you're in a tough situation. Uh, but especially tough uh, if. Uh, if you're if you had Carlos Hyde, I think Carlos Hyde was the one player that you were, you know he's been um, out of the all availables. I'm looking at any names that are big names. Um, McCown being questionable is probably a name that some people are going to be looking at heading into the week. Um, Philip Dorsett is probably not going to play. Um, I'm looking for any other big names. Austin Stephen Jenkins is closing in. If you want a tight end going into your final stretch, who might be interesting, you might want to pick him up as a flyer at the end of this week uh, because he's probably going to be ready for next week. Um, and he presents to you a good end-of-season matchups in Chicago, New Orleans, Atlanta, Indianapolis, Philadelphia, Dallas, New York Giants. I mean, we're talking about great matchups except for one week in St. Louis on a Thursday night. And Thursday nights actually benefit the offense because you have less time to prep. Their defenses have less time to prep. So, um, yeah, I, he's he's probably a good grab uh, later on. He had, a, obviously, it's based on one game. Um, but he became a big target for Jameis Winston. I think the offense is kind of skewing towards Doug Martin charged offense, but at the same time, um, tight ends have been woeful this season, and he's one that has shown flashes of really being a red zone target. So I, I definitely look at him going forward. Um, I'm trying to see if anybody else is available. Melvin Gordon um, has been struggling. Um, I just don't see him being as useful as like Danny Woodhead in that offense. Uh, Danny Woodhead provides you a lot more versatility. His back out of the backfield work is going to be really what makes him, you know, special and important to the team. Uh, so when you're talking about players to go after, um, Danny Woodhead probably is owned in the majority of leagues, uh, but. Let's see. Yeah, right now, 94% of leagues. So people are aware that's the running back to own in San Diego. Um, so if you're, if you're reaching for Melvin Gordon, it's, it's, it's going to be like an end of the season play at best, uh, but most likely not going to provide you with anything. And uh, yeah, we went through that pretty quickly. There was not a lot of... Uh, real injury news this week. Uh, I think the big there were a couple of defensive injuries that are worth noting, um, such as Justin Pierre-Paul coming back to the Giants. Uh, he won't be playing. He won't be traveling with the team to New Orleans this week. I still say he's probably maybe one or two weeks away. Like if you look at the Giants themselves. Um, Uh, why didn't that search? There we go. If we look at the Giants themselves, you you, you see that this is week uh, week eight against New Orleans. They have three more games to their bye. 
he may get it a go against New England, but otherwise I say he waits through the bye and starts the set the ending game stretch. Washington Jets, Miami, Carolina, Minnesota. Because when you look at that stretch, I mean the only game that I think is going to where the Giants wouldn't be favored. Hmm. They might be not favored in the Jets game, but I would say they have the upper hand there in terms of being favored. Um, the Jets probably have, the Jets have a better defense, but uh, when you talk about by that point having Victor Cruz back, uh, the Giants probably just are the more explosive offensive team. Uh, then you look at Carolina is probably their the real test. Carolina is probably a game that they they should should drop not should drop but probably a game that they could drop um, with how great Cam Newton's playing. So uh, yeah, I would just be wary of of the, this this late game push with the Giants defense might be something to be intri- you you be you utilize the Giants defense for. Um, they're not a team that is. You know, great by any means, but really, really few, really few people own them. So they'll be available for you late, and they do have some decent matchups going forward. And they have, when healthy, a very good secondary that provides you, um, you know, plenty of pick six potential um, in Prince Akamu Gamora when he's back from his pectoral injury, and Dominic Rogers Kumari, who has already taken two picks to the house this season. Uh, which I think is tied for the NFL lead, or it might be behind um, um, cornerback from Carolina, uh, number 24. I'm blanking on the name right now, but uh, he's been except, exceptional this season. Uh, so when you look at those kind of stats, you're seeing the Giants as potentially being a team that can you know, provide you some end-of-season uh, good, viable fantasy plays. Um, so that goes through kind of the... Uh, starts uh, not starts Marcus Colston's uh, was not, uh, not injury related um, missed practice but again it's hard to start any um, Saints wide receivers right now again because of Drew Brees syndrome so I'm going to go through uh, this fantasy lineup that I have uh, Victor Cruz again is out um and he's still got a couple weeks left. I he he's probably he probably should have been drafted a long time ago. But um, as a Giants fan, I'm kind of partial to Victor Cruz, so I'm I'm holding on to him. I really don't have anything else to do with that slot. I've got a couple other droppables like right here, um, and this is you know a flexing play. Like this is a pickup quarterback for this week. So this is the lineup I'm going with. Um, most likely, uh, the one potential switch is looking on the waiver wire for a fantasy replacement um, at wide receiver. Because right now at wide receiver, there's just not much on my waiver wire. We have a lot of buys. So, um, we're talking about Torrey Smith. St. Louis is just not a good matchup, uh, especially after he was blanked in Seattle. Um, so it's hard to you know trust him. Kamir Aiken is only a good play if Steve Smith is out. Uh, trying to look at some other names for you. Uh, Jamison Crowder has had some decent games in the back. He's been targeted. He's a target dude. Um, but he, he just doesn't have those deep routes. Uh, so I, I, don't, I, I just don't see anything on the waiver wire that screams to me. Uh, Marcus Whedon might be able to do something more with Ben back in the lineup. Uh, but then again, he was replaced by Hayward Bay in a position where I think he should have been like a number two in that offense when he was really like around four. Um, Hayward Bay, Heath Miller um, were all in front of him. And now you have Martavius Bryant back in the mix. It's just hard to see him being really utilized. Um, an interesting play is Dwayne Harris. Um, who without Victor Cruz has, you know, gotten more looks over the past few weeks. And I think the, the game in New Orleans is going to require the Giants to score more points than they have been. Um, so he's potentially a good play. Um, but again, nothing here screams, oh, got to pick him up. Uh, Roddy Wright without uh, Hankerson 
is kind of an interesting play, especially against Tampa Bay, a team that I expect um, Atlanta to, you know, go roll over. The problem is um, Atlanta's not throwing the ball as much as they have in the past, and that's mainly because of the development of Devontae Freeman. Um, with Devontae Freeman's emergence onto the scene, I think he's the second or third highest scoring fantasy player t- overall, and in the top 10, the only running back. So you're talking about a player who's getting a lot of work, a lot of carries, a lot of touchdowns. He's he's taken away from the passing offense that Matt Ryan and the Falcons have, and that's not a bad thing because if you look at the Falcons' schedule, they're, they're, I think they're six and one. So you're talking about him being better for the, your real life team, and also that translates into more compelling matchups. Uh, for your number one wide receiver. Like, a Julio Jones actually has been benefiting from a Devontae Freeman. He hasn't had so much on his shoulders. He's been able to get quiet 120-yard receiving games and no touchdown. But that's a solid 12-point outing from a num- wide receiver number one, you're going to take that every time. Um, he still have his, you know, boom games. And very few bust games just because he's not facing, you know, two and three rolling coverages because there's more people in the box. And that's good also if you're a Matt Ryan owner. I think Matt Ryan's interceptions have been down this season so far. Uh, and that's, again, contributable to having a, you know, more developed the run game. Um, so all of these things are useful and, and helpful um, from a fantasy perspective. And I think that going forward that, you know, a player like Roddy White is not someone we're going to be looking at and saying, mm, I got to go get him. But at the same time, if Leonard Hankerson's out and he's the clear number two, a week like this against Tampa Bay, where Tampa's got to focus on one or two things, like cutting off completely the running game, Roddy Mike's an interesting play and somebody I'm thinking about, but probably won't start. Um, he also, if you're trying to pick him, if you're trying to pick him up or decide who to drop, if Leonard Hankerson, which is with a hamstring, might be out a couple weeks. Especially because they've got a bye in week 10, so you know, sit him an extra week before the bye, so he's got all that time to recover. Um, He's got two very good matchups coming up in Tampa Bay, and then again against San Francisco. So those are two really good matchups, and he becomes an interesting pickup from that respect. Um, Especially because you can get him this week for free, because he's pretty much unowned on the waiver. Well, he's owned 60%, but... I would check your leagues. A lot of people are holding on to him. You could even trade for him for somebody who's waiver wire fodder if you want to. But, uh, yeah, you know, go after him because for the next couple weeks, he could be really helpful and pivotal in your matchups. Um, but, again, that's kind of a long shot. I would say if he's on the waiver wire, take a look at him, see if your your, your team could use him, especially because if he does well this week, it could be the, the springboard for him to be utilized a lot going forward, um, like the the week after that, against a porous uh, San Francisco 49ers defense. Well, that kind of goes through our um, taking players, but let's go through uh, really quickly the games, and then I'm going to leave you guys uh, probably a, around a 30, 35 minute show. Not too bad, not too long, not too short. Uh, a little bit short, but not too short. Uh, let's go through the games. Kansas City and the Lions. I I do like the the, the as a as a fantasy game. I do like this one. I think the both teams have weaknesses on defense, especially in their secondaries. I think the Chiefs' secondary is younger, and that's where their inexperience comes from. I, I think the Lions are just not very good on the back end. Um, but Alex Smith isn't going to take advantage of that, and especially with Jeremy Macklin. He's going to play, but, uh, you know, has some nicks and cuts. I want to see what Kachandrick um, <laughs> uh, West does, you know, have to how he follows up his 100-plus yard game. Um, what they do with him, do they utilize some more out-of-the-backfield stuff to take advantage of um, Detroit's confusion in the defensive end? Um, this could be an interesting game from that perspective. See how his hands are. Uh, see where that comes in. Uh, but it's, it's good. And on the Lions side, I think it's a good game for Calvin Johnson. I think it's a good game for um, Matt Stafford. They have the ability there. Um so it's, it's going to be an interesting game from both perspectives. Um, and good fantasy points all around, I think. 
Ravens Chargers is a great fantasy game. Neither defense can really stop anybody. Both offenses like to open it up. Uh, I think the Ravens should try to control the ball more with Justin Forsett if he's healthy. Um, because really Joe Flacco is you know limited into having to throw to Steve Smith. He really doesn't have many other options on that offense, even though he's throwing the ball a lot. Um, so we'll see where that goes. On the Chargers side... Wow, uh, if you have any Chargers who, like Keenan Allen, um, even uh, even an Inman, I think, is a good play. Stevie Johnson is a good play. Uh, just Danny Woodhead's a great play. There's just so many good matchups for the Chargers that, you know, obviously start Phillip Rivers if you have them. It's just a, that's a fantasy gold mine game. Um, and I, I say you, you got to look at those kind of games and say, mm, starting all my players here, this is this is where I want to put the emphasis. Uh, that's in comparison to an Arizona-Cleveland uh, game where I don't like it if I'm the Browns, especially because it might mean Johnny Manziel as quarterback. Now, a player like Barnage, who's been tearing it up for the Browns, um, problem is... He's been doing that mainly under Josh McCown. And that's because McCown has a progression system, how he reads defenses. I don't think Menzel is developed enough to read defenses to get to the tight end option. Um, he likes, to, he does like throwing a deep pass to Benjamin. That he does enjoy doing. That he's good at doing. Um, he has the arm strength to do that. Uh, I think if McCown's in the game, you're going to probably see shorter passes because he's got a shoulder injury uh, on his throwing shoulder. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting play there. I'm not high on Browns players. I have to start one at least this week at the wide receiver position. But other than that, I'm not high on Browns players at all. Um, uh, I, I'm considering benching Barnage for Witten, even though Barnage has been a monster this season, just because it's such a potentially bad matchup, especially because of how good the secondary is in Arizona. You're talking about Matthew um, most likely being lined up on your tight end, and Teron Matthews, you know, been a beast this season. Um, you're also talking about a very good linebacking core in Arizona. It's just hard to see where Barnage would get his beneficial matchups, uh, even though he's been consistent, even though he's been very good. Um, he, I don't think he's scored less than 10 points in a fantasy game since week two or three he's just been so consistent but this is the week that I, I, I just can't see him getting around all these obstacles um, but if he, can get, if he can get through this week, if you have him and you play him and he gets through this week with a 10 point game he's matchup proof and that's also something to know going forward if he's matchup proof, that's great for you you can forget about your tight end position unless it's his bye week that, that basically becomes what happens. Um, and I th actually, I think Cleveland's already had their buy, so there you go. Um, but uh, for Arizona, start Chris Johnson. Um, Andre Ellington, I think, is still going to play second running back to the team. So start Chris Johnson. Start Carson Palmer. Uh, start Larry Fitzgerald. Um, so I mean, yeah, the Cleveland's defense really doesn't pose much opposition. So start start your Cardinals. Um, Vikings Bears is another game. Too. I think that the Vikings defense is much better than the Bears defense. I actually am yeah, going to start the Vikings defense in one league, um, even though the Bears are much improved. Uh, but the Bears defense is so poor, um, and Adrian Peterson and the Vikings chew up so much clock. Uh, Stefan Diggs is a good start this week. Adrian Peterson's a good start this week. Teddy Bridgewater, if you're in need of a quarterback, could have a very good game against a terrible Bears secondary. Um, so, all good starts. Um, and I'm not hesitant to play Bears players. If you have a forte, roll him out this week. It's going to be a little bit of tough sledding, but I think he'll have it. You know, a decent fantasy stat line. Uh, I'd be worried if you're looking at like an Eddie Roll, Marquis Wilson situation. Um, I just don't think that Jay Cutler is going to have a very good game in Minnesota. Um, but that that that's just that's just how I feel. Um, let's see what other matches do we have. Giants Saints. 
Um, I do like Mark Ingram in this game. This Giants defense um, just hasn't been really good against the run. Um, they're still missing John Beeson. Um, they're still, you know, vulnerable in the middle. Um, and without Prince of Mokomora, their secondary is very weak. I mean, they got by the, the, the Cowboys just because of how poor Castle played. Um, their defense is opportunistic, and their special teams is playing lights out this season. Uh, I think the offense of the Giants has to play at a really high level, have to play a ball control offense. This might be a week where I, I, I would expect to see a lot of Shane Vereen. Um, Shane Vereen's kind of been lost in a couple recently, but this week might be the week just because of how the Saints play. The Saints are weak at linebacker, too. Uh, the Saints are weak in the secondary. Um, so it becomes who has more weapons on the outside. And the Giants might be that team. Odell Beckham Jr. could go off in this game. But it's going to be a matter of setting him up for that. And I think that's where Shane Vereen comes in. You go in the backfield looking for Odell on a double move. And if it doesn't happen, dump it off to Shane Vereen. And you're going to keep moving the chains. I don't think the Saints have any way to stop that. Any players that can you know, cover Vereen in space... I think that's got to be your game plan going into this week. With a mix of maybe Doc Watt and Jennings running the ball, um, you know, to provide you with some balance uh, and to provide you with more clock chewing ability. Because this one's going to be in New Orleans. So what you're going to have to do is take the crowd out of it. The best way to do that is long stretches where the Saints don't have the football. Because um, I, I know a lot of Saints fans, and the way to get the Saints fans nervous is to keep their defense on the field. They, they just don't expect much from that defense. It's so young, so inexperienced. It, it's been, you know, absolutely burned a lot of times this season. So that's what the Giants have to do. And I think if they do do that, it becomes a really, really good fantasy game for both sides. Um, I do see Drew Brees maybe committing one or two turnovers in this one uh, because of how the Giants defense is playing, how opportunistic they're playing, and Dominic Rodgers, Comarty is really going to be able to float. Um, there's no one receiver who presents, you know, a, a damning matchup problem as in past. I think uh, if this is if there's a game um, for Brandon Stills to go off, uh, this would be it. But they have utilized him so rarely. Uh, I think that that might be, you know, a too little, too late kind of thing. So we'll see, but I think that's a good fantasy game. Uh, the only the only player I see of value in the Rams for an hours game is uh, Todd Gurley. Obviously, Todd Gurley is a great start, but other than that, I feel like that game is kind of useless from a fantasy perspective. Oh, other than also starting the Rams defense. I think the Rams defense is another great start there. Um, Tampa Bay, Atlanta. I, we talked about this one a little bit before um, in just how I feel that Tampa Bay does not provide a competitive matchup against Atlanta. The only way they can do it is really short in the game. A lot of Doug Martin, a lot early, often all game long. Um, mixing in some Mike Evans, maybe a couple fly routes, you know, if, if the game's, you know, a 14-3 or something, you know, getting out of touch, going deep, you know, kind of a quick hitter to get him back in the the mix of it, uh, but I see the Falcons handling this game. I also see the Falcons, uh, the, the Tampa Bay selling out to try to stop the run. I don't think they'll be successful. I think Devontae Freeman's still a great start, but because they're going to sell out so much, Roddy White and Julio Jones present very good matchups for both of them. Leonard Hankerson's out, so Roddy White is your number two receiver in that offense, so those those are the players that we got to look at. Um, see was there anything else in that matchup no just start your falcons basically just start your falcons uh jets raiders is a game that i uh, i like a lot of the jets players i don't like anything on the raiders even though amari cooper has been good even though david carr has been decent uh just because the jets defense is very very strong um they're very strong against the lump run um don't start latavius murray if you have a better option um Chris Ivory is going to be a good play. Brandon Marshall is a great play. Eric Decker is, you know, potentially injured, so Brandon Marshall becomes even a better play. And Brandon Marshall has, when he's had a bad game with the Jets, he's always, you know, an error game, like where he commits an error. 
Um, he always, you know, follows it up with a good, good outing. So I, I think he's playing very well for the Jets. He's been one of the most consistent fantasy receiver, receivers from a fantasy perspective this season. So Brandon Marshall is definitely somebody I would, I would start. Um, Seahawks Cowboys start your Seahawks. Um, start your Seahawks. I'm, I'm not confident in anybody on the Cowboys in that game. Um, especially with how much better Seattle looked uh, last week. They looked Legion of Boomish. Um, and going against uh, an inexperienced quarterback like Castle, um, who doesn't really know his receivers and isn't really finding anybody. Um, Jason Wynn might be the only player I start on the Cowboys, just because he is a comfort blanket for Castle, and he has a knowledge of how to get open. Uh, so he might be the only one I start. Uh, Darren McFadden's going to be the starting running back after his great performance and with Joseph Randall out. However, there's no value there. Um, the the line back in court uh, and the Seattle's front is so good. The Cowboys' offensive line is amazing, but I don't see them really being able to move seven bodies with their five, so it's going to be a tough matchup there. Um... Denver Green Bay, no Eddie Lacy, yes Aaron Rodgers, um, yes to probably James Jones and Randall Cobb, although my expectations are tempered, um, uh, no Peyton Manning, um, maybe a yes to Ronnie Hillman, uh, uh, yes to Damaris Thomas, only because you have to, yes to Sanders, only because you have to, um, but, you know, not expecting much fantasy wise from that game two very good teams going to play a very competitive game um probably not too high scoring so uh, that's where i see that game and then the monday nighter the colts panthers cam 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 newton is in my mind mvp caliber player this season he does everything for that offense um and from a fantasy perspective he's been lights out I mean, he he's, he throws he throws a lot of interceptions, but really doesn't matter when you're also running for touchdowns, uh, throwing for you know 250 plus every game, getting 40 yards on the ground and a touchdown. He he just does it all for that team, so it's hard to you know go against Cam. Um, also, the Panthers' defense has been very very good. The Colts are starting to get it together, but Luck has not had a very good season, so um, there's a lot. There's a lot there that I would say. Um, trust your Panthers. Um, Jonathan Stewart will probably have a good game as well. Um, hard, hard to say. I don't think I don't think I see much from Frank Gore. T. Y. Hilton is somebody I would start. Um, but other than that, it's gonna be it's gonna be a difficult game for the Colts in my opinion. But uh, that kind of goes through all the matchups um, and. Really, we had a good talk. I feel like there was a lot to discuss uh, in terms of these games, and I think we got a little bit more out of it than I even, you know, thought uh, we would. Um, but at the same time, kind of a short week, kind of a less interesting week. Patriots already may have ended your fantasy matchup um, because of Tom Brady, Edelman, and Gronk. But that this is this has been the Friday show. And I thank you all for anybody who watches this on video on demand on Twitch or on YouTube. Um, come check us out. And we'll be back the same time thereabouts on Tuesday. So have a great fantasy week. Have a great fantasy weekend. Have a great real life weekend. And I'll see you guys back here very soon. Talk to you later. Peace.